Hello there! My name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video I'm going to be turning a manga page into a pixel art illustration. For this I'm going to pull something from a series called Magic Knight Ray Earth, which is about three girls who are transported from Tokyo into a magical world. And naturally they find out that they're destined to become magic knights in order to restore balance to this land. The page I've selected from a redraw features Hikaru, who's one of the main three protagonists, and she's coming face to face with one of the rune gods who can grant her the full power of a magic knight. I thought this was a really dynamic page. I like the symmetry up top with the eyes and having the character art cut over the panels from there, so it should be a lot of fun to tackle. The first thing I'm going to need to do is to figure out what canvas size to use for my pixel art version. And to do this, I'm going to start by writing out all the text since this is really the thing that will determine what a minimum pixel resolution could be. I'm roughing out the two different sizes of lettering here in my best approximation of small but still readable pixel fonts, and then the rest of the illustration can be sized according to these blocks of text. Once I had the lettering, I arranged them on the page to get a better feel for the sizing. My initial canvas here was 140 by 200, which was just something of the same ratio of the original page, um, but obviously, as we can see, it's a little bit of an underestimate now that we can actually tell how much space these letters are going to take up. So I expanded the canvas and updated the positions of the lettering, and eventually settled on a canvas size of 200 by 270 pixels. At this sizing, the text is actually going to be a little bit proportionately larger than that in the original drawing, but there's still enough room to have that be workable. And I'd prefer to err on the side of lower resolution like this anyway, uh, so that the end result comes out looking very pixely. One of the things that I want to adjust before moving on to the artwork though is the sizing of these larger letters, which I felt could be sized down a little bit, and also given a more bold and stylized appearance. Alright, for the artwork, you'll see here that I have the reference art nearby, and I'm doing my best to recreate that in my selected resolution. I have fun attempting these sort of redraws from reference like this, and kind of trying to look past what the finished artwork is and sort of imagine the construction behind it. But another important factor here is that even just translating that art into pixel form also requires its own unique approaches. At this resolution, the line weight of even just a single pixel line is quite thick uh, relative to the thinness and the tapering in the original illustration. You know, it'd kind of be as if you were trying to draw the same thing with a really thick marker maybe. So it doesn't take long for adjacent details to start to compete with one another. So the way around this is that the details themselves have to be sort of stylized or simplified to suit that allowable space. And this is actually one of the reasons that I really like to attempt this stuff at somewhat lower resolutions, because that sort of size restriction kind of forces this problem solving to occur. And the end result is something that takes on a different character than the original. What this actually means, like when it comes down to the nitty gritty of the pixel line work itself, uh, a lot of the challenge here is just in proper segmenting of straight lines versus curves, uh, like having the individual pixel units step around a curve in the right way to provide a smooth curve, um, or maybe to do it in a different way if you want something sharper, things like that. Another restriction I'm using here is that I'm limiting myself to only three shades, um, which is actually kind of funny since technically there's actually only two shades present in the original artwork because if you look at it really close, uh, even the areas which appear to be gray are actually just a series of really fine black dots. Um, and certainly there would be room to replicate certain halftone effects like that with pixel art dithering, for example. But having at least one solid gray tone in the pixel version will be kind of a nice approximation of the kind of tonality that we see from a glance in the original artwork. With the various limitations at play, it can also be important to find ways to introduce a bit of separation between various elements on the page to help with the overall clarity. I've tried to leave small single pixel gaps between two competing elements, or like when something runs over another panel. And in the case of a focal piece, like with the sprite of Hikaru here, uh, the whole thing is outlined in black. And then around that, I'm doing an extra outline in white. So this sprite is going to show up over a black background, so the extra white outline will just help preserve the black line work when it's shown on top of that backdrop. And I feel like it helps the artwork kind of cut across the other panels as well. With the way that some of this character art overlaps, it was useful to have everything separated onto individual layers. 
Uh, that way I could turn things off or reduce the opacity and kind of draw the full character out, even if some of that would eventually be covered up anyway. But the individual layers approach actually plays into something more important than that. Um, basically, my whole idea with this exercise is that I also wanted to try adding some animation to it. You know, I was thinking about uh, how motion comics are a thing, where you get a little bit of movement or some effects that just kind of give it some life. Um, although sometimes I think they just do things like distorting vector art and stuff like that too. Um, but with how dynamic this page is, it'd be really interesting to see what could be accomplished with even a small bit of looping animation or something. Um, like the kind that I might do in just any typical pixel art piece. Particularly for this bottom panel here, I thought it was really cool how we see this rune god, who's uh, sort of this wolf-like form with this mane of fire, and they're enveloping Hikaru. And I wanted to try my hand at a cycling animation for all those flames to really highlight this moment. I started by laying down some line work for the first frame, which was loosely interpreted from the original artwork. And my approach for getting the animation started was to lay in some really scratchy lines of the other flame shapes, I'm just kind of interpolating some new positions based on where it had started. So here are the initial three frames that I created with this really rough approach. And although it is very rough, it just gave me something to grasp onto. And my plan from here was to create frames in between these positions and sort of expand this out into a full set of six frames. In addition to tidying up the line work along the way, uh, another thing that I was looking out for was to have small bits of flames complete a full cycle of motion. Uh, as in the individual flame particles, I guess, would grow and kind of deform and then shrink in such a way that it could just sort of keep continuously feeding itself. So here's a snapshot of some of that, uh, still rough at this point. This little particle here is probably the best example of that. But that's sort of the idea that was expanded into the rest of the flame pattern. For the large text bubbles up top, there's this fine line work creating this kind of glare or burst. And I got the idea to create a stylized version of this using the polygon shape tool. And this one lets you choose the number of sides that it'll have. And you can also use it to create stars that'll instead have that number of points that you specify. So for example, if you set this to five points, you get kind of this classic looking star. So my idea here was to set it to something much higher, like 50 points, and then drag that out to create a burst. From here, I'm creating two copies of this pattern, and I'm gonna rotate them slightly offset compared to the original. So when we play that animation back, it'll be kind of this rotating wheel effect. Now, of course, you catch a lot of jaggy lines throughout this, um, but you know, for the number of lines that you get here, it's sort of a quick way to get this started at least. And finally, you know, perhaps one of the easier animations, I guess, uh, is just changing the position of an otherwise static sprite. Uh, which, you know, I thought would just give this sort of fun levitating appearance. I've added a lot of other small kind of simple animations, of course, too. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the final animated manga page from Magic Knight Ray Earth. Here we go. All right, so you can see there's quite a bit at play here, but surprisingly, a lot of these animations were just really minor, uh, just these like little small touches that kind of add up collectively to give a lot of movement on the page. I actually did the fire animation first, so I think by comparison, everything else just felt way easier and like less taxing. Um, but even so, I think my favorite ones are actually just the little shine on the eye there. And then I also noticed that there was that leftover space next to that panel there. So I've added this little sort of heart flame transformation thing as a bit of additional decoration and just kind of my own personal touch to add to it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the final result. Uh, it was also just fun for me taking on an exercise like this as a way to study and admire the original art. And we'll go ahead and close out with some CRT time to take a closer look at this pixelated animated version. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.